Over the past few years, DC Animation has moved away from being just for kids and become quite complex and adult in its themes. A great example of this is the Young Justice TV show, which explored quite a lot of mature themes of different relationships. And because of this, there have been one or two sex scenes in the animated movies. <laughs> you want more, Bruce? Don't take it all for yourself. Don't worry, ladies. Plenty of me to go around. Now, although these films are watched by adults, they are still intended to be watched by kids for the most part. And as such, we don't see the sex itself. After all, we're not talking about a hentai porn film. But instead, we see the before and the after scenes which I think is a better way of doing it, as seeing them actually in the moment might be a bit weird. There are some exceptions in the case of our rated films, which can show a little bit more, but even then we still don't see too much, in a way because it would be a little weird, and because we all know that regardless of the age rating, kids will end up watching the film anyway. So this list is the five best sex scenes in DC animation, with the scenes being the pre and post coital moments. Number five. Batman and Batgirl, Batman the Killing Joke. Now, this scene was not well received by many, but it had to be on this list, even if it is in the last place, purely for its fan reaction. Whether you love or hate this film and this scene, you can't help deny that everyone had strong feelings about this moment. Now, a lot of fans didn't like this scene, and it is a little hard for me to see why, no pun intended, but as far as I can tell, they dislike it because they feel that Batman is mentoring Batgirl and that he is taking advantage of her. Now, I've never really personally thought of them like this. I've seen them mainly as partners. I thought we were partners. We are. So personally, I don't really see the problem as I don't think it's taking advantage of her and the relationship they have. They're both consenting adults, so leave them to it. But everyone is entitled to their own opinions. The scene occurs because Batman and Batgirl are arguing. He is being overly protective and not letting her get involved in a case they were working on. You're off this one. What? I don't want you on this case. At all? This argument turns into a fight, and then this fight turns into sex. It was fantastic. Like fireworks. And the reaction that the characters have to this is very complex. It's an adult theme that's reminiscent of friends getting drunk and having a one night stand. And it changes the dynamic of their relationship forever, with Batman not being able to handle it. And this fills Batgirl with anger and regret. It was just sex for God's sake. It doesn't have to mean anything. It's not like we have to care. I don't care. You don't care. We just go back like it was. That's all. Although Batgirl does have a bit of an overreaction in anger at one moment and decides to attack an innocent bystander for next to no reason. I need space. Hey, hey, hey! There. Space. This is a very odd moment and it's not very heroic of her. True, the guy did look like a jerk. But I try to be what you want. You're not listening to me, Debbie. You're so damn clingy. I feel trapped like I can't move. But that doesn't really justify throwing him 10 feet into the air, especially since we don't know any of the backstory of these characters. And with the film's R rating, the scene is one of the more graphic of DC animation. And though I respect the theme they went for, with it not just being a quick fleeing sex scene that you normally see in films with no real consequences, but actually a real life affair with consequences and regret coming from it. Maybe it was too soon, even after all this time. Talk to him, Babs. Some guys need a period of adjustment. They get nervous about commitment. He's only human. I must still say that I didn't really see why it was in the film. It's not really needed, and in a way, it seemed to be just there to justify the R rating. And personally, I don't think this kind of thing should have really existed outside of erotic fan fiction. Some characters just shouldn't hook up in the official DC films, because it kind of ruins the whole relationship, as this film clearly shows. I thought I'd save you the trouble of ending this. I'm sorry. It's just that... I get it. It's one thing to protect the city. Another when it narrows down to one person. Number four, Aquaman and Wonder Woman, Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox. Aquaman and Wonder Woman as a couple is a little different to what animators have done in the past. In the New 52 movies, it's Wonder Woman and Superman. In the old Justice League TV series, it was Batman and Wonder Woman. In the Wonder Woman film, it was Steve Trevor and Wonder Woman, both the live action and the animated version. But this film is the first time I've ever seen in animation Wonder Woman and Aquaman as a thing. 
and considering that it ends up with their two nations going to war and killing untold millions, maybe that's a good thing. This scene has no talking and is told as a montage. Basically, the plot of the film is that the Flash has changed history and only he remembers how the world used to be. But his memories are resetting the longer that he's in the new timeline. Somehow I remember things from this timeline. How Aquaman destroyed most of Europe. And this is one scene of his memories resetting, showing him what has actually happened in this new world he has created. Which doesn't quite make sense as there is no way he was actually there for any of this. But anyway, Aquaman and Wonder Woman have sex, which is seen by Queen Mira, which of course is Aquaman's wife. And rather than her being angry at Aquaman, as he is her husband and has just cheated on her, she instead decides to kill Wonder Woman. This backfires as Wonder Woman is a better warrior and beheads her and wears her crown as a trophy. Which is what leads to the war between the Atlanteans and the Amazons, as the Atlanteans demand retribution for their queen's death. And in truth, I think this scene is quite amazing because of how much storytelling and information is gotten across in such a small amount of time, making the whole montage quite impressive. We see how Aquaman cheats on his wife and the emotions that come with that, how betrayed and angry his wife is, and how angry Aquaman is at himself, how he regrets his affair with Wonder Woman and what's happened since. I can't believe I ever loved you. You never did. And how their people demand blood for this affront, and of course the feelings that these people must be feeling, as they're just seeing their queen being beheaded. They don't actually know the reasons behind it, and they probably don't care, because it's their queen and they love her. They will pay for what they did to Queen Mira. <laughs> I told you never to speak her name. And this is all gone across in a very few short scenes with no real dialogue, so it's quite an achievement. Number three. Talon and Samantha, the Grand Master, in Batman vs Robin. This scene is interesting, not just because it's a sex scene, but because of the way the scene is laid out, giving us so much information all at once. We know who Talon is under the mask, we know that the Court of Owls is ruled by a woman posing as a man. Now, now, you know better than to disobey the Grand Master. And that she and Talon clearly have strong feelings to one another. What can I say? I'm a born worrier. Then I guess I'll have to relax you. Mm. All over again. And we know all of this almost instantly, just from the way the scene is laid out. With their outfits, where they're positioned, and the way they talk to one another, and the way they are positioned, and the fact that they are both 100% comfortable being completely naked in front of one another. And allowing someone to see all of your vulnerabilities is a special kind of intimacy. This also changes a lot of the film for the audience, as we've seen the Grand Master and Talon interact before. At his core, Bruce Wayne is one of us. I hope you're right. In my experience, the Grand Master is rarely wrong. But it's only now that we learn that it's Samantha, Bruce Wayne's girlfriend, that is the Grand Master. And all they write about is the billionaire playboy. Not to worry, he's here too. Why exactly she hides behind a mask and her voice changer is not explained. I imagine it's either because she killed her father and took his place without telling anyone, or because only men are allowed to be the Grand Master, and so she has to pretend to be a man to be in charge. Bruce Wayne's ward. How do you... That means Wayne is... Batman. But this changes the way we feel about the Grand Master's scenes and how we feel about Bruce Wayne's girlfriend. All the while we've been thinking that he is the one hiding secrets from her, but in fact she is the one hiding things from him. Though again, it's never really revealed exactly why she is doing this. But it's a very short scene that has a lot of detail to it and changes a large portion of the film. And I should say that though they are naked, this scene hides most of their bodies in shadow, leaving most of the scene to the imagination, and cleverly stopping the scene from being a little bit too graphic. Since when do you believe in the law? Only one law, my love. My law. Number two, Harley Quinn and Deadshot, Batman Assault and Arkham. Now this film really should have just been called Suicide Squad, as it basically is Suicide Squad, with Batman having had quite a small role to play in the film, and even if he was actually taken out of the film, it still would have been fine. But in any case, the film sees Amanda Waller catching a group of supervillains, implanting bombs in their heads, and then sending them out on a suicide mission. Task Force X is an off-the-books government strike team, made up of convicts with no hope for release, serving as expendable agents for impossible missions. 
They get their equipment from the penguin and spend the night at his hideout before heading out. Harley has decided that she has a crush on Deadshot and decides to sneak into his room on the night before the mission. She is naked and pretty clear about why she's there. I got an itch. I thought you could help me scratch, cowboy. Wow! Oh, good start. This scene is great for two reasons. The first is that it shows us Harley's state of mind. Harley Quinn has always been defined as just being the Joker's girlfriend. In fact, that was the whole reason she was first created. But over the years, as she has gained more and more popularity, she has, at least in some versions of the character, moved further away from this and been a character in her own right, not just being shown as the Joker's girlfriend. Oh, Harley. Always such a disappointment. Why do I bother? Ain't no slick fella with a cheap suit and cheap a grin telling me who I am ever again! And this scene shows her moving away from the Joker and sleeping with someone else, which, with the exception of Poison Ivy, we've never really seen before. And the second reason is that it fulfills the fanboy fantasy. Let's be honest here, there isn't a DC fanboy out there who hasn't, at at least one point, fantasized about Harley Quinn, especially after seeing her in Suicide Squad. And this scene delivers a pretty good version of the fanboy fantasy. We see Harley as confident in her body, she is the one coming onto him, and she's also pretty wild in the sack. So it checks all of the boxes of the fanboy fantasy and makes for a really good sex scene, even if it is a little bit quick, but as they say, less is more. Number one. Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle in Telltale Batman Season 1. In the video game Telltale Batman, Catwoman has just rescued a near-death Batman from the Children of Arkham and taken him back to her place for some much-needed medical treatment. After a little talk about their lives, some bantering and a little flirting, one thing leads to another and they end up spending the night together. Now I must say, although you don't really see that much skin, this does feel a little bit like some sort of online sex game, as the player gets to decide whether to kiss her or not, whether to let her undress herself or whether he wants to undress her. Do I have to do all the work myself? Or are you going to undo this for me? Let me help you. Mm. It's what you do best, isn't it? and all of the other moves you'd expect the two to be doing in a scene like this. But at the same time, it doesn't feel that weird, probably because it's done quite tastefully with not too much being shown. And it probably doesn't hurt that this animation looks a bit more lifelike than 2D animation. And I must say that this is definitely the most attractive version of Catwoman that I've ever seen in animation. I personally never thought that she looked like much in comics, video games and other movies, but in this game she is definitely hot and I finally see why Bruce Wayne likes her so much. And as I've mentioned, this is a Telltale video game, which means the player gets to decide exactly what happens in the scene. So it's tailored to the player, and as such, it adds a level of intimacy and likability, as everyone gets their own version of this scene, which is something we haven't really had before in any DC animation sex scenes. But along with the playfulness and banter that Catwoman and Batman have, there's also an emotional connection that adds another level to it. And unlike the killing joke scene, this explores the adult theme of a one night stand that goes well and leads to more afterwards, as the two continue to be close throughout the other chapters of the game. Though since this is a Batman romance, it of course must still end, which is a shame, but it's all part of the Batman charm. It's also nice to see the relationship go to the next level for once. A lot of the time I've seen these two in media, it's put across as a very will they won't they type of thing, which in my opinion has been too overplayed at this point. And even when they are clearly in love with one another, it's not always clear whether they've actually slept together or not. But this scene is not subtle about where the relationship is at. And that is the five best sex scenes in DC animation. 
Now, with something like this, it comes down to personal taste. So many of you will think that these scenes should be in a different order. So please let us know what your favorite sex scene is in the comments and what order you think that they should be in. And whether you think there are any other sex scenes that should have been on this list instead. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to Needlemass Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, there is a link in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.